Hello and welcome back to our Shaolin Talks. Um, my name is Martine Niven. I'm Janine Brower. Um, and today we've got an amazing topic to chat to you about. So um, this month, you know, uh, we'll be chatting about um, tourism and uh, travel and lifestyle. So today we have a great topic about lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and we thought it'd be really great to chat to you about tea and tea culture and give you some top 10 tips of new teas that maybe you haven't tried before and discover a little bit about them, about their health benefits. Um, and maybe some of you out there have never even, maybe even even tried tea. Drink or, tea, yeah. Yeah, exactly. there's actually some amazing teas out there. Some of them, we say, we say teas, but some of them are actually herbal teas. So some of them come from plants and from flowers yeah. and from herbs. If it is actually tea, then it comes from a specific tea tea plant. So we've included some of those in our top 10 tips as well to uh, tell you about these really great, great refreshing drink that you can... So yeah, anything that's uh, nowadays um, classed under tea drinks, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even, even things... You, I think you probably in the supermarket, you can... You have like a whole shelf of different teas and so yeah, on because right. it, it's getting more and more popular as well for people to drink tea because also it's like as an alternative to milk or something, you know, mm. when people nowadays um, maybe a bit lactose intolerant or they want to mm. be a bit more organic or a bit mm. more healthier. So there, there's kind of a tea culture developing. I mean, mm. you have already different cultures. I mean, I think the most, most people probably think of tea coming from China or from Japan. Mm. Um, but I know, I mean, in Germany, even people drink tea as well. Mm. English people drink tea. Yeah. Well, England um, has, a, has yeah. a very strong uh, culture of drinking, drinking tea, as you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, um, I think tea culture has been around for thousands of centuries and especially in China I know it's like even like 5,000 year old practice of tea mm. drinking that's kind of developed down through the ages um, and I think originally um, tea was considered um, almost considered medicinal mm -hmm. like back in the ages and we're going to explore this when we give you your top 10 teas that you might want to try. try yeah yeah when we've been doing our research um, we found and discovered that tea was um, used in the monasteries, it was used um, uh, to help in meditation practices and also helped in China for when the monks were praying they would use tea um, to help yeah, keep themselves awake. <laughs> sometimes also it's like what's nowadays called alternative medicine, isn't it? They, mm. they used it as medicine like yeah, herbal teas right. and so on. And I mean some of the ones we're going through, I mean I some of the ones I have on my list um, I know since childhood as well mm. um, for certain things. So I've been given certain teas yeah. when I was a child and had certain <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, issues. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say, I or, think it's yeah. kind of like as it's gone down through the ages, it's kind of changed. So now we've developed and we've got this kind of tea culture occurring. So maybe sort of in the old days, they, they did use it for medicinal mm -hmm. purposes. And now they kind of use it as a kind of a formal sort of greeting mm -hmm. or um, when you're meeting your family or and um, even the queen, when she presents new people to yeah. the country, she will offer them a cup of tea, you know. It's a so bit of a social, uh, it's a very social aspect as well to it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Okay, I mean, maybe we can start off as like, because you, we, we just mentioned uh, teas have like a lot of health benefits. Mm. Um, maybe we can just mention some general health benefits and then just go through our like... Um, Top 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the first, um, the first health benefit is, I don't know whether you guys out there have heard um, the word antioxidant. You probably heard that word quite a lot coming up when people are talking about teas and them being beneficial for your health. Um, but antioxidant is something that, um, something that kind of slows down the aging process. So this mm. is one of the health benefits of, of drinking tea is um, that it helps to rebuild the cells in your body. So we say it's got many antioxidant properties in it. So this is one of the benefits of That's really of good tea. because we always want to look young. Yeah, look uh, younger. <laughs> 
look younger. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it also, it's like weight loss is another one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, you can drink. Just like, the reason yeah. for that is because it um, it helps with your digestion, especially mm. some of the teas we're going to chat about later, like poor tea. Um, uh, they really help to... Um, help to break down food in the body mm -hmm. so and they help to really tonify your stomach so some of these teas yeah they're great for weight loss yeah i didn't know that <laughs> yeah but yeah and then i think you have you have certain types of tea um that are calm and relaxing right mm. so that help you with stress or help you with sleep if you if yeah. you can't sleep yeah. and then are others i think that do the opposite right that yeah, they're um, stimulants. They stimulate you and they uh, kind of liven you up a yeah, bit. Yeah, wake you up. Kind of like a, yeah, this is the ones that have the caffeine in it. So like tea, um, we're going to talk about a, a few teas that are, don't have any caffeine in it at all. These are ones that are like the herbal teas um, and the flower teas. So some of the teas that we're talking about, they become from flowers or herbs um, and then obviously that you've got these stimulating teas as well that come from actual tea so like green teas and mm. and poor teas but like um, Janine was saying these ones that there are teas that you can take that are quite sedative so things like chamomile you know you see them on the on the shops you know they, they yeah. kind of maybe you should start with the first one chamomile is a really good one yes right? okay Let's start with number one tea chamomile I really like chamomile, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> and I usually have it also, it's like uh, chamomile, you can combine it uh, really good with honey. So, um, oh, yeah. So, first of all, obviously, chamomile tea comes from the chamomile plant, right? Yeah, it's kind it's of like, like a white it's a flower. Dried, so, they, they take the dried flower head oh, and yeah. um, so, so it's dried and then you uh, steam it, right, or boil it. Okay. And then that's where you, I mean, chamomile has lots of other, you can also kind of, it uh, helps you with, um, if you have like cold or so, oh, anything okay. with your head, you know, sometimes you can just do and breathe it in, inhale, yeah, you can, you inhale, can inhale and it helps you to um, kind of clear up your head. Clear your sinuses. Yeah, a bit. clear your sinuses. So chamomile is for, good for this, but chamomile tea in itself um it's really good as well if you have like cramps or pain, wow, like okay. you know, cramping pain mm. sometimes, especially when you're if you're a woman. Okay. Um, <laughs> that really helps. Um, also, if you like, um, I think it helps with inflamm inflamm inflammatory inflammation in your body, and if you have cold-like symptoms, um, it, it really helps you also to calm calm mm. down and um, reduce like inflammation and stress mm. as well and it's also one a uh, good one for your skin wow it's got so many you health know? benefits because also it's like chamomile it's, it's just also the plant in itself i think because it is like it's chamomile creams and so on yeah so but the tea the tea in itself so i like it if you put some extra honey in it so yeah <laughs> it's really good some people also say like you might be want to be a bit careful with chamomile if you have allergies because in the end okay. it is a plant mm. um but at the end of the day sometimes it's like if you want to fight allergies you you actually want to mm. actually address, address yeah you can have this, it like yeah. a little bit it's a bit yeah, like a homeo bit. homeopathy mm -hmm. isn't it where you have a little bit of something and um that you're allergic to and it can help your body yeah. can help to fight to fight it yeah but yeah, be careful if you are allergic. So, <laughs> I've tried. I've tried chamomile. I've had a little bit of yeah. chamomile when I can't sleep at night, <coughs> and I think it, it does. It has a really quite sedative, mm. sedative effect, doesn't yeah. it? I think another um, uh, another one on our list. So we've got number two. Number two. <laughs> number two. <laughs> because we've got ten all together. So number two is um, peppermint. Yeah. Did you know about peppermint tea? Peppermint. I if I remember peppermint from being. When I was a child, I haven't had peppermint tea in ages. But it's really common. I it's remember, really common. I remember it having it as, as a child whenever I had digestive problems. No, that's right. That's yeah. right. Actually, its main um, ingredient helps you to digest if you've got stomach mm. problems or any kind of stomach complaint. You can have you can have peppermint tea. Actually, 
ginger tea, which is coming up next, is actually very <laughs> similar to that, but yeah. that's quite heating. But peppermint, if you think about the nature of peppermint, it's quite cooling. Mm -hmm. It's got a very, very cooling property. So if you think about your stomach, is on fire like inside yeah? yeah yeah and maybe all the stomach chi is rising up and you're feeling really sick then peppermint has this kind of very cooling quality it's able to kind of bring your chi right down yeah that's really kind of good. cool the body down so sometimes these these herbs you can think about the nature of them so you can think about you know if you're very very hot maybe the quality of this tea mm -hmm. will help you to to cool down yeah, so yeah. this is really great. And it's got a, quite a nice smell as well, doesn't it? It's like yeah. a minty, minty smell. Minty, like kind of a minty yeah. smell, yeah. So I, in my notes that I've got here, it says peppermint <laughs> is traditionally used to relieve discomfort in your digestive tract. Mm -hmm. And it can help to relieve nausea, cramping, spasms in your stomach and stomach pain. Yeah, there you go. So that's your that's go, a really, really good go one. to tea for... Yeah. Like stomach, that's good. Yeah, that, I'm going to remember that one if I feel, <laughs> feel sick, you know, if I yeah. feel like oh, very hot and nauseous, you can have it. It's quite good as well for, you know, if you're feeling, yeah, if you're feeling like nauseous, like you get travel sickness or something mm. like that, you can, yeah, you can take it. Yeah, sometimes get travel sick as well. Yeah. But yeah, okay. So that, that's, that's a really tea. good one. Number um, two. So yeah, just <laughs> let's move on to number three, right? So as Martina already mentioned, another one is ginger tea. Mm. So ginger tea is a bit spicy as well, isn't it's it? It's very hot. And yeah, it's I a hot nature. You, you prepare the root. Yeah, 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 the root. So I think you have to boil the root if you do it from scratch. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I know in Chinese medicine when you're preparing it, it's really good for clearing wind cold. Mm -hmm. So if you have a cold and the beginnings of a cold, so you have like a sore throat coming um, or uh, you feel like a bit headachey, so it's the beginning parts of a cold, that's when you use it. Um, so you have to, say so you have to use three slices of it Yeah. and you can use it with um, spring onion. And yeah. what it helps you to do is it helps you to sweat. Yeah. It helps you to perspire and it helps you to sweat out the illness from your body yeah. <laughs> so, it's, I, I don't know if you ever tried ginger tea it has like this really distinctive taste yeah. it's a bit like a spice as well yeah it's very it's, pungent it's, <laughs> it's very yeah. pungent i mean i do like it uh, we have it at home as well gin, mm. ginger tea do you know it's yeah. really really effective and um, i've got a story because um when i was traveling when i was younger i was mm. traveling i went traveling to, to thailand and we went to this island right in the middle of nowhere it called i think it's called Koh Lipe, and it takes about so many hours to get there you have to get you have to take a you have to walk there and then you have to take a train and then you have to take a boat and and basically you're like out in the middle of nowhere like this yeah. island really remote and um, i went to this island and um and i got really really sick really sick and there was no you know there's nobody i think there's like about four huts on this island in the yeah. middle of nowhere you know and um i was really really violently sick i was like throw like throwing up so what, did you have ginger root no, with you? No, well, <laughs> what happened was that the... The, the couple that were staying next to us in the hut yeah. could hear me throwing up really oh, violently right. and they, they felt so bad <laughs> that they came round with this these ginger um, ginger capsule, like ginger crystals yeah. for me to take mm -hmm. to stop me throwing up. And it actually it hurt, it it actually worked. worked. Yeah. Oh, it was brilliant, that's yeah. Awesome. And it was hot. You took it and it basically stops you from mm. being sick. I think another thing where, where yeah. this is good for <laughs> is also if you... Um, it's like, you know, we're eating lots of sugar and so on, you know, mm. sometimes I think that can balance a ginger tea can balance this out as well. If you have a lot oh, of craving right. for sugar, so it can get your blood sugar level down. Oh, wow. I mean, it's I not, that, it's that. not, ginger. they've done a few studies on this, but it's not, as you know, mm. sometimes I think they need to do a bit more studies yeah. on this to, yeah. to really prove it. Yeah. But I think... That's sometimes also, we uh, we nowadays in English tea, we drink a tea with a lot of sugar as well. Yeah. You know, and I know I know a lot of people sometimes say like, oh, I don't, I want to cut down on sugar and milk and so on. Mm. So a ginger tea also really helps you with, um, you, to reduce your sugar levels. So okay. if you uh, also, the studies are not really there yet because I mean, there have been, studies going around these kinds of teas and they're slowly building up um, okay. but uh, some of them show that um, if you have diabetes or 
yeah kind of want to control a bit your sugar levels um that will wow. help you yeah that's really mm -hmm. interesting i didn't know that about ginger yeah. i didn't know it controls your sugar levels yep. that's amazing oh cool the okay so then the, the next um the next tea, tea number four tea number four <laughs> is also a um a plant, plant tea, tea yeah. and this is called hibiscus i don't know whether you've do you know much about hibiscus, I've, the plant I've hibiscus? I've heard it, but I don't really know. Do you know how the plant looks like? Well, I <laughs> I haven't. I had to do some research on this one. So um, um, I know it was a popular drink. Yeah. Um, and I know it has quite a lot of health benefits. But I don't know whether you've seen the plant. The plant is, it's kind of... Um, uh, it's on a tree and it has like this really bright red flower and it kind of has a big stalk coming out, mm. like really bright red. Um, and the actual tea is made from this this flower and it's a uh, it's quite interesting actually because um i'm doing quite a lot of study about herbs and plant and plant medicine at the mm -hmm. moment obviously because we're learning all the yeah, chinese yeah. medicine um so the research that i did recently um it was talking about plant chemistry and it was saying that if the plant or the tea or the flower that you you know that you're steeping you're drinking if it is a very vibrant color like red even like mm -hmm. berries and things like that are really red it has a chemical in it called a, f a flavoid yeah yeah so it's um now this this chemical is really really important in um medicine and uh it has some really great healing yeah. healing properties so the redder and the more vibrant it is actually the more the more kind of healing properties it, it has yeah um so and it's this, like you, 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 you're also saying if it's like um, colors, it sometimes um, relates to like parts of your body as yeah, well. Yeah, that's like right. Like red color, the heart, exactly. or blood pressure, or something like that. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. So I think hibiscus tea is quite red. It's it? red, yeah, yeah. and rose hip. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So they're all kind of like yeah. related to the heart. Mm -hmm. um, and it's quite interesting because in, in culture as well, um, uh, there is um, like an uh, old saying that the creator or God or however you see the creator um, put signs in nature. Um, and these signs are like an indicator, they're like signatures, which give you a kind of an indication of what that plant can treat. Yeah. So, for example, if it's a red colour, it can be related to the heart. You know, if it's a yellow colour, it can help the stomach and spleen. And, and also, sometimes it's to do with what it tastes like. If it's very, very bitter, it will have an effect on the heart or, um, or sometimes even the shape. You know, mm. like the shape of it, you know, it kind of looks like a heart. If you look at a rose hip, it kind of looks like a heart, doesn't it? Yeah, like a, yeah, yeah. And that has a really great effect on the heart, yeah. doesn't it? So this, this uh, hibiscus has got a really vibrant red colour. And um, it's had quite a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of effects on the heart. It's really good at reducing your blood pressure. And there's a study here that says um, it was um, it was a test. It was a study done on football players. I don't yeah. know whether you've heard about this. And they took it for six weeks to see if it would de decrease the their stress their levels. stress levels. That's yeah. really good. And, and apparently it did. Yeah. It did, yeah. Oh. Apparently it did. Yeah. Awesome. So. If you're very stressed, hibiscus is your tea. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic so. tea. Yeah, it's a really, really great tea. So it's really lowers, apparently, really lowers your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. That's pretty good. We have another one. Number five <laughs> is one I can't pronounce. Echinacea. I always, always go like, <laughs> oh no, why do I have to pronounce this? <laughs> no, I'll help you. It's echinacea. Echinacea. Echinacea, yeah. Okay. Echinacea. I actually did look this up, you know. So <laughs> echinacea tea is, is again another plant, uh, plant based tea and it's actually coming from North America. So it is not, um, it's just slowly coming into our regions and oh, so on. Okay. So, but it's basically coming from North America and um, it looks it actually the plant <laughs> looks like a hedgehog <laughs> that's why, yeah that's why sometimes they also call it like hedgehog plant or um oh, wow, yeah okay so i thought it's, that that's quite an interesting fact <laughs> but um so again echinacea echinacea <laughs> tea 
is um, is really good for your common cold. So if yeah. you again, if you have like your common cold or flu, um, it, it helps you boost your immune system. Mm. It's, it soothes your throat. So if you have a sore throat, if you want to clear up again your sinuses, mm. um, that's if you have stuffy nose. That's mm. what you want to uh, yeah. try and drink. So yeah. I heard that it kind of boosts your immunity. Is that right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. For, uh, like boosts your immune, immune system, system as well. Yeah. Mm. I know they sell it so. a lot in the hub, like in Holland and Barrett's. If you go in there, you can see they've got lots of. Um, you know, they have a lot of things like saying, oh, take this capsule, echinacea, or echinacea yeah, this, echinacea yeah. that. But yeah, I d you can actually drink the tea as well. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So right. yeah, definitely want to try, even if you can't pronounce the name. <laughs> 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 so number six, we've got another one that I probably can't pronounce, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, is Robosh tea. Yeah. Have you had a Robosh tea? I had Robosh tea because, uh, yeah, no, it's a few, also in Germany, they sometimes have these tea shops, you know? Okay. It's like they have, it's really, I love going to German tea shops because they, they and they have a lot of Robosh tea in there and black tea and oh, okay. different kinds of tea. And they, they usually have them in like little containers and you can kind of get them out, smell them. Um, Ooh, and then nice. it's like you, <laughs> you get a bit of if you go into the tea shop sometimes uh, if there's like the person in there they usually try to help you what you want what you um, and yeah there's a, usually a whole section of robust tea and then sometimes they have different flavors with this like sometimes this with vanilla or mm. yeah other other flavors yeah it's from South mm. Africa yeah it's a South African Tea. It's, like, it, it's like red bush. I think it translates into red bush. Red bush, tea. yeah. 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 And um, mm. it, it's got kind of a woody, like a kind of mm. a woody, woody taste to it. Yeah. Um, but actually this this tea has got a lot of health benefits as well. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize actually that it's that it's been used um, historically in in South Africa for a long period. Just took quite one region in South Africa. Um, and they've been using it for many years for these sort of medicinal uh, purposes, yeah, yeah. which is just, I just found fascinating. But there hasn't been that much scientific research on it. Yeah. So they have to do it's, a lot it's more It's the same, research. isn't it? I think they, I've read similar stuff. I think they also said it's like it's re it should be really good for your bones. That's right, your, yeah. Your bone density. That's right, like, and yeah. And your bone growth. So, yeah, but yeah. again, it's like... It would be good if people do a bit more research on this and um, yeah, yeah we, uh, I yeah. mean, as long as it helps. <laughs> yeah. And heart, heart it? disease as well, yeah. apparently it's, it's, it's renowned for heart disease and mm -hmm. bone health. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so that was number six, right? Yeah, we're on number so seven now. We're getting on to number seven. <laughs> number seven. <laughs> so number seven, we sure about this? Yes, it's number seven. Sage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sage is sage is actually another one of um, uh, the herbal teas, also like that was used in like old abbeys and monasteries, yeah. and um, because it really helps with your concentration and uh, with your brain functions. Whenever I think so, of sage, I always think of burning sage. You yeah, know, like. Um, in the Celtic tradition, they use sage a lot. They kind of use it to to c space clear. Exactly. You know, in churches, kind of... exactly. In, in churches, they use this, like, you know, for a church services and so on. Yeah. Sometimes you can smell this too. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, they, they did studies that it's, it's really good um, used with people kind of to pre prevent Alzheimer's disease. Really? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, so because it's really known for this cognitive function. Um, and the, the other one is uh, also kind of for your, uh, to improve your brain health, your mental and your um, memories. Wow. So yeah, that's that's what uh, sage is known for, like in the olden days. Okay. Yeah. So wow, sage. And I, th I suppose do you would you take would you like steep the leaves? Or? Yeah, yeah, you do, you do, you do exactly that. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I think you know, I mean, it's it's again, it's like sometimes. So Sometimes also it's used in, um, I don't know, I mean, I, I like to have like bubble baths, right? And uh, sometimes <laughs> sage is used in there too. Oh, it must be a relaxant so it's like, as it's, well. it's a lot, it's, it's also relaxing as well. So a, a lot of these things that we say, like these herbs and um, medicinal things, you, you also find them 
a lot not just in teas but also like if you if you want like medicinal baths mm. or that's like, because they release yeah. kind of like essential oils at mm -hmm. the same time like a bit like aromatherapy yeah, aromatherapy. As well. um yeah this is another thing i was mm. studying in this plant chemistry was this uh, turpentines is like a, a chemical that's produced that's a smell mm. and the smell has an action on your body so it could be a yeah. decongestant you know it could be a stimulant it could it could be an expectorant it could get mucus out of your body you know a bit like yeah. time because yeah. time can be a tea as well yeah time and sage are similar yeah, kind as well, of similar isn't it? yeah so, they're very similar so yeah t i think time you use more for like if you have a cough mm. or also if you want to clear your mm. your head i know this isn't on our list no. but time is really an amazing tea i really i really do like i really do like time this is like um this is my <laughs> this is out of our list this is out of our extra, list <laughs> a little bit tip. extra tip yeah the <laughs> okay. reason why because you know there's a lot of people who are uh, suffering with coughs and colds and, yeah. and things like that and especially at this time you know well i mean you see, like you you recommended this to me and i i tried it yeah. i drank it like for i don't know three weeks <laughs> and it's it really, really great helped. it really helped me yeah, so it's yeah really no, it's really, it's really good and uh, one other story was my um my brother has just had a new baby, a mm. little baby. He's gorgeous. And um, <laughs> he um, he had like a, this whooping cough, you know, like yeah. a whooping cough. Um, and they tried loads of things for him. And the um, doctor said, you know, it's going to take time. You know, you just need to let it run its course. And I said, oh, you know, have you tried to put time yeah. into the bath you yeah know, when he's having a bath just break the time off in the bath yeah. and let the aroma um uh you know let him breathe it, it in yeah. and see if it helps it does it does it, it literally does no i'm not joking you yeah. he literally does no i know because it's you like put it in the bath if you, and if you drink coffee. if you you don't have to even have to drink the tea even if you smell yeah. it it's you yeah. can already yeah but it's chemically yeah. proven that it produces these chemicals that have you know an action on the body like an essential mm. oil anyway okay <laughs> so cool. yeah um yeah let's move on to number eight okay number eight <laughs> number eight is an actual tea is a real it's a proper it's tea. a proper tea <laughs> it's a tea tea like english tea <laughs> It's a black tea. So, um, yeah, so this tea, um, you might not have heard of this tea. Um, it's called a pua tea. So it's a, Chi uh, a Chinese tea. Um, and I didn't know whether you know much about, about Chinese tea, but um, um, it, Chinese tea obviously all comes from the same the same. It's like it's the, the one that comes in these discs, right? Yeah. They look well, that's like, what the, this mm. this particular tea is. But mm. actually, Chinese tea, the way it's made and the way it's cultivated, gives it a certain type of quality. So, for example, if you just pluck it off the plant and you dry it for a little bit of time then that gives you a certain type of tea like a green tea or an oolong tea but if you ferment it over time and you compress it and you take oh, take it away from oxygen mm -hmm. um, and it's fermented it produces another type of tea and this tea um, well this type of tea is called <laughs> pur tea so they basically process it and they pack it really, really tightly yeah. um, into like it's a quite disc. Dense. Yeah. They're quite dense. Um, and they leave it for kind of a long period of time. And, and they kind of come in China when you see it, um, it comes in like these kind of discs, like you said, it's called like a tea cake. Um, and it's a little bit like, it's very, very earthy. It's mm -hmm. very earthy. It has some great medicinal properties. And green tea and Chinese tea has got a very old, very ancient history a little bit like english tea yeah. and japan like you said japanese tea um, um and it's almost like poor tea you can imagine like poor tea it's like a dark red color when you when you when you make it um and the longer that you leave this tea to ferment over time um the better it is and the more healing properties it has and it's a little bit like a fine red wine you know if you leave a yeah. red wine to age so, over time so the older it gets the more expensive right that's right exactly <laughs> it is it's just like so, that yeah there you and go. it is you know some of them are really really expensive in china yeah. these poor teas they can go thousands and thousands of pounds depending on how long how long you've left these tea for they can they can they can be a lot of money okay. but um but for this particular tea it has to come from one province only it has to come yeah, from which one is that um, yunnan province if okay. it's from any other place in china it's not poor tea okay so it has to come from from yunnan province it's got a history over two thousand years yeah yeah that's so amazing. that's a long time right <laughs> 
yeah um and it's kind of like this it's compressed so it's mm. compressed yeah and it's just a, it's got amazing properties so um, what's the best property of poor tea it's got a very distinctive taste mm -hmm. it's not for everybody but the main the main um, medicinal property for drinking tea it, poor tea is it it helps your digestion. digestion okay yeah and usually people will drink it um after they've had something to eat just yeah. to help the food break down um, also like like people do in the um, Mediterranean countries drink yeah them, that's uh, right yeah they have drink, these little, yeah. little, um, little like, shots of yeah, tea yeah. don't they yeah yeah and yeah it's so kind of a little a little bit like that and Ooh. it helps to break down the food um and um yeah it's just it's a it's quite a strange taste if you've never tasted it before i would really recommend it it's very very earthy very very earthy but it's fantastic for your digestion yeah. if it's good for your digestion remember it's good for losing weight yes yeah yeah so okay. <laughs> that sounds that sounds great Poor tea, yeah cool let's move on to number nine <laughs> yeah, yeah so number nine we've got the rosehip tea Oh. That's again another, or we, you'd mentioned this before in, in combination with the hibiscus, isn't it? So it's, yeah. it's similar to this. It's red. Um, it's not made out of rose petals. <laughs> oh. It's not because it takes like the, the little thing that's under it. It's like, it's like more like the fruit or the, okay. the thing. And, and you do this. Uh, rose hip tea is very high in vitamin C. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. and I remember... Um, drinking lots of rose hip tea when I was younger. So when I was a child, um, it was either always rose hip tea or peppermint tea. So you <laughs> had really? your choice. <laughs> so you had your choice. And, <laughs> and I quite liked rose hip tea because it had a red color and oh, it, yeah. it tasted a bit sweeter than the peppermint tea. Yes. Um, yeah, I've so, never tried rose hip yeah. tea. No, and it, it also basically, again, it has anti-inflammatory uh, properties. It also helps with your skin as well, again, for um, like aging. Is it and good for the heart? Mm -hmm. It is, oh, because it's red color. I just thought yeah. that maybe it might be good for the, for the heart. Oh, wow, yeah. that's yeah. amazing. And obviously in Chinese medicine, if, um, if it, your heart is like, um, it's defined like by your complexion, mm -hmm. So you can tell the state of somebody's heart by their by their, their complexion, which is quite interesting because if it treats the heart and the complexion as well at the same time, then it yeah. kind of all makes sense. It kind of all yeah. fits into place, doesn't it? Mm, cool. Okay. Cool. So we have got our last, last one. Last tea. We saved the best tea for last. <laughs> <laughs> English tea. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. It's not English tea. <laughs> I think the English tea is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, but this one is good as well. This one's really this good. One so good. Um, we finished with green, green tea. tea. Chinese green tea. Because it's like it, the green tea is like a lot of variety as well, you know? Yeah, it's there's like, so many different there's types. There's so many. You have like um, jasmine tea, oolong tea. Yes, yeah, so you have They're flower all, teas. Like, flower teas. You have yellow and red teas and poor tea, like we were saying earlier, the way, and oolongs and yeah, and chrysanthemum tea is also like a, mm. a, a green tea. Yeah, so, well, that's actually a flower tea, but yeah. Um, green tea, like we said before, um, it's extremely, it has a long cultural history. So all the way from it being medicinal um, to it being for just for royalty mm -hmm. and it being for um, members of the party and then for it being like part of a, a national drink, like a heritage, yeah. a heritage drink. And now um, in China, and obviously in, in Asia, here, different I parts of Asia, you do like a tea world ceremony. Well, isn't it? Yeah, it's you like have... green tea. Is it around the world you drink green tea now? Yeah. Don't you? It's like it's. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, um, yeah, like a cultural, mm -hmm. very cultural thing, um, and it's like a, the national, the heritage, heritage um, drink, uh, national drink in China is like green tea, and like when you go, when you go to China, you you will see like everybody especially the older generation, they have these little flasks that they carry around with them. Have you seen that? Yeah, they, I've seen this. Yeah. yeah, and even like the bus drivers, everything, <laughs> taxi driver, you know, like everybody in the park, you know, they'll have their flask of green tea mm -hmm. because they know how good it is for the health. Yeah, okay. it has loads of antioxidant properties. So what, what would you say is the best um, 
the best benefit of green tea? Um, well, it has a lot of antioxidants mm. in it, so anti-aging, and it cell, produces cell growth. It's great for your immunity. Um, it's detoxifying. Um, I can't. I've got. I've got some. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a list here. Again, stress release as well. It's a isn't stress it? release. Yeah. Um, so for green tea here, it says it's antibacterial, antiviral. Mm. It regulates your cholesterol and your blood pressure. It kills bacteria in the body and in the mouth. So sometimes people will use it to gargle mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. to kill the bacteria. Um, it can lower your blood sugar level. So if you've got something like uh, diabetes or something like that, it's really good for, for that. Improves your blood flow. I mean, there's got a list. I have like a list here. It's like, shh. There's like <laughs> so, pages and so pages that, of it. That's pretty much <laughs> like, um, that's why we saved it for last because it, it kind of has yeah. everything, the, all the and other really, ones has, uh, have as well. Isn't it's it? amazing. And it's um, really good for inflammation, really good if mm. you've got rheumatoid arthritis. So, I mean, you know, like yeah. that's why the, the generations, over thousands, thousands of generations have used it. They've used, Originally, they used to use it for medicinal medicinal yeah. purposes. They used to use green tea for medicinal. And obviously the monks have a history of using it for meditation practices, mm -hmm. you know, because it's got a lot of caffeine in it. So it'll keep you awake keep your brain stimulated obviously yeah. in meditation you don't want to go to sleep right <laughs> you want to stay <laughs> conscious yeah so yeah so they they used it a lot for yeah. for that but i love green tea me do you too. like green tea me too yeah yeah, yeah i do love i green really tea too. i really love the I love tea, tea ceremony yeah yeah have you have you guys ever experienced a tea ceremony it's almost like a piece of zen yeah when you when you have when you go to a tea ceremony it's it's just like a, a whole art form, isn't it? It's yeah. a whole kind of experience in itself. And um, it's definitely a lifestyle experience. So if you ever get a chance to go and to experience, experience it, one, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they have like these little, they have like a ritual. So you, you pour the tea a certain way and, and then they have like these little tea creatures on the table and then they kind of feed the tea creatures and, <laughs> and then you just experience like having yeah. the tea like a sip, these little tiny cups and... It's a really great experience, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, so green that's... Tea. Uh, green tea. exactly. <laughs> and I mean, it's like a, 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 in a tea ceremony, they also might have the pua to your other Chinese mm. teas. But I think also, I mean, this is a great selection we have today. Mm. It's like, that's just mm. like our best 10. Yeah. Um, we would like you to try. So it's from herbal to... Flowers. Flowery. Um, so a, a, a bit of a range of everything so mm -hmm. if you haven't tried any of these go ahead and yeah. do and even if you haven't found your tea yet um, I think there's one tea out there for everyone <laughs> or you can just make a cup of tea you know when you yeah. have a cup of tea at home you know you can just yeah. have like a PG tips or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it's really great you know yeah. it's quite it is, it is a very social thing when we were when I um, I'm, my family are from up north, yeah, so they're from Yorkshire, from Sheffield, and they drink tea. That is like, you know, if you ever have a problem, cup of tea, put the kettle on, you know, it's, all, it's just like that. It's, yeah. it's a really, really social, really social affair, you know, like if any problem, okay, let's put the kettle on, let's have a cup of tea, let's sort it out, you know, tea's going to solve everything Anything i think yeah. tea does literally solve everything like, <laughs> from here from all of the health benefits it literally does right mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah so yeah and um I, I just wanted to mention one other thing as well about tea was especially green tea is is you can keep using the leaves mm -hmm. yeah once you've used it you can keep using it depending on the quality you can keep using it over and over again so but just don't leave it overnight yeah don't leave it overnight yeah <laughs> you just keep filling filling it up you know yeah. kind of yeah. yeah, that's fine. That gives you different strengths of tea as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's brilliant. That's so we good. um we hope you enjoyed our little tea talk today, and uh, you've got some um, different teas that you can try at home. We've got chamomile, peppermint, ginger, hibiscus, echinacea, robosh, sage, pua, rosehip, and green tea. And we even threw in extras, didn't we? Time, time. We gave you a little <laughs> bit of extra as well. So yeah. Um, if you want to um, tell us about your experience of tea and maybe something you yeah, want to share with us. Yeah, maybe add some other teas you can that add you teas. tried that we should try. <laughs> yeah, and let us know and leave your comments. Um, and we really look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Okay. And we'll see you next time. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.